Hello everyone, welcome to another vlog on ChatGPT. If you already watched my previous vlogs, you got to know about this new AI sensation. You knew about this new AI tool and how it changed the paradigm of conversational AI and started a, a big competition between Microsoft and Google. You all knew about that Microsoft already acquired OpenAI and they started integrating this new ChatGPT tool into Microsoft B. Just as a response, Google came up with their new AI tool called Google Bird. We haven't used that tool yet because that tool hasn't been publicly accessible, but it seems like the revolutionary tool ChatGPT started a war between these two tech giants. A lot of exciting things are coming, so we'll see how future holds for all the AI enthusiasts like me. Now, um, after using ChatGPT, you start wondering that what's next? How you can leverage this AI tool for your business purpose? Or maybe you can build a new, like a personal project from this ChatGPT. So I can give you an idea about what you can do with this ChatGPT tool in this particular vlog. Because in, my in the next section, you'll get an overview of how you can build your first web application using ChatGPT model. Hello, in this section, I'll show you how you can build a streamlit web page using the Python library that can harness the ChatGPT model power. As you can see that I opened two screens side by side. On the left side, you can see the screen of PyCharm software. So PyCharm is one of the most popular ID that Python developers use to write Python code. And on the right hand side, I'm showing you that primitive web page. I mean, like once I, as I build this web app web page, how does it look like? You know, it will give you an idea about that. This how, you know, like you can actually create a very small, like a conversational like web page that can uh, run based on, you know, that can run on chat GPT model and provide response accordingly. So let's focus on the PyCharm code, you know, the Python code first. So move on to the PyCharm section. Here you can see that in the first in the first section of the code, you need to import the relevant libraries that are useful to build a web app. The first uh, uh, useful library is Streamlit because we are going to use the Streamlit and its uh, underlying functions and methods to build a web app that are, that is being displayed on the right side. And the second uh, useful library would be like OpenAI because you need to use OpenAI library in order to gain access to the uh, GPT 3.5 model. Uh, then um, well, after you you know import all the you know useful libraries, the next section would be how you can design the layout of the web page. Since it's a very like a basic web page, so I did not spend a lot of time in designing it. All I did is like just build a style sidebar, and the sidebar contains all the information like about how does it work as well as the author information. You can always create a separate about page or some other page that's kind of beneficial for this web app. Once you get done with this uh, sidebar uh, creation, the next step would be to design the main page. Since uh, this for, for this particular model, we don't have uh, from, uh, a lot of information that we need to pass on the main page. So I try to keep it very basic. Um, since our main purpose is to generate response from the chat GPT model based on the input users would provide, then all I need to do is to create a search bar where users can type in their questions or pass on information which GPT model will capture and then you know provide response in output format um, which will be displayed on the screen. So that's all we need to do on the main page, right? So that's why um, all I what I did is here you actually I created a search bar. So this search bar is the main gateway to pass all the input uh, related information to GPT model. So if you check on, on the code, so here in this section that where we are kind of like, uh, we created a variable, I created a variable called prompt. So the prompt is going to capture the input text in a string format. And that prompt variable would be passed to the open AI completion that create function. So that create function will capture the prompt in a string format and pass it on to the GPT 3.5 model which is also called as text.hng003. 
And I showed, uh, I talked about this model in my previous vlog. So I'll definitely recommend you to check my previous vlog to gain more information about this 3.5 model. Now, one more important thing is in order to access the model, you need to make sure that you have uh, access to the gateway. And the only way you can, um, you know, gain access to the gateway is via the API key. So you need to make sure that you have the API key uh, easily accessible before you start building your web app, because that API key is your main gateway to access that text DaVinci Resolve Three model. So once you, uh, you know, pass that input prompt, you know, in string format, then ChatGPT would process that and it will start. Uh, you know, giving you response in the same string format as well. So in that case, all you need to do to make sure that you can display that output on the main page, which is kind of happening in this area. Okay, so this particular code is very important. So make sure you follow the code and try to leverage the same code for building the similar web application for your business requirement or any other personal project. So now, um, so this is kind of like a sh uh, short walkthrough of the code. This is not a very lengthy code. As I already mentioned that I try to build a very primitive web app. I don't want to spend a lot of time on building the layout. Uh, if you want to design it in a different way, uh, you're feel free to do so. You can always leverage the code and you know, like add more HTML or JavaScript elements to make this web page more graphical, intuitive, or you know, visually aesthetic. <laughs> So yeah, so now let's see how this thing works. Okay, so now we designed the web page, it's working. And also one more thing, before we go further, uh, you need to make sure that you know how to run a, GP, um, a Streamlit web app or a Streamlit Python code. Uh, as I think I already um, mentioned that in my previous, you know, a few minutes back that Streamlit is the main Python library. So when you're trying to run, run this Python code, you know, displayed on the Python screen, you need to make sure that you run the code. You try to run the you know Python code using Streamlit function. So once you get done with you know writing your Python code for you know web development purpose, the next thing you is you need to run it. You know to run that, you need to pass this. Uh, So you need to basically uh, so call the Streamlit, since this Python code is also invoking the Streamlit library. So you need to actually call the Streamlit library using this um, of one line of code, and, and that will uh, run the Python <clears throat> the Python module, and uh, the there, and it, that will display the web page. So once you um, hit enter, you can see that the web page is gonna appear again. So so now we can see so so that's why that one line of code is uh, being used to like you know start the engine uh, to start basic engine for the web app so now let's find out how this web app is working is it really working is it you know can generate uh, the response uh, based on the chat gpt model so let's let's find out that so in my previous blog i think i showed you a couple of examples right you know like how we can uh, use chat gpt for grammar correction purpose so let's start with that so let me just this thing. Okay, so as you can see that you know this uh, web app was able to uh, you know correct the grammar of the particular sentence. Okay, so that means if you uh, so that means if you don't get access to the GPT three playground or if any way you can cannot get into the main OpenAI GPT site, you can always use this web page to collect the same response from the GPT three perfect model. So you don't have to like you know get on a waiting list or even like a pay subscription fees in order to get access to the chat gpt you can always like call their api key and build your own web application for your purpose now let's see if this web app would be able to you know pass other example or other test cases as well so to, to do that let me just let me see if uh, this web app can also produce the same SQL query that I was able to generate on the chat GPT site. Let me just look for, you know, the third highest salary of employee instead of second, All right? Hit enter. You can see that it's running. All right, now you got uh, the SQL response or SQL query 
that will help you to find the third highest salary of the employee pool. So I think you started getting the idea about that, you know, why this web page would be very beneficial for your purpose. Because now you don't have to like rely on a certain website. Uh, you can design your web application or you can design web application that will be tailored towards certain group of uh, users. And, um, and you can always do some, anything else. All you need to do is to make sure that you have your API key that uh, will that can be you know useful to call the GPT 3.5 model. Now the, let's see another example before we wrap it, wrap this up. So I think we also kind of like uh, talked about that how we can you know like uh, perform document summarization, right? Like for example, like I want to want this web app to like you know, summarize a paragraph for a second grader. Like uh, let's let's you know. Try to find out something from here. Okay, so we have a lot of information about ChatGPT. Now let's go to the wiki page. We have a lot of information. Okay, so now if you want to pass this inform, if you want to like share this information with a second grader student, it will be difficult for them to understand everything, right? So how do you and summarize it and you know create you know create a few liners or that you know, few line liners that will be kind of useful for a second grader student, a second grader student to understand what is ChatGPT and comprehend in a better way. So for that, let me pass this uh, thing to the... All right, let's see how is gonna summarize it for a second grader student. Okay, so as you can see that it's kind of like uh, giving you a little bit of idea about what is ChatGPT in a more layman's term rather than going into a more, more technical details. So it's more of like, I would say another example of uh, you know, document summarization that you can also you know, leverage using this tool. And now also one more thing about this web app, you know, if you what one if you want to download the chat GPT response, you'd be able to do that as well. So I created uh, just let's move on to this PyCharm section. Here you can see that I created another like a file name a variable and a special button, download button, that will be useful to download the response in a text format. So like you know, in a and I think this kind of uh, download button would be useful for document summarization purpose. Like if you want to investigate the you know the response in a better way, you might not be able to do it on the web page. Rather, you download the text and see whether ChatGPT was able to accurately summarize the information, or in some of the information were kind of misleading. So you just click on the download text, and it's kind of like downloaded some of the information for you. Okay, so it's gonna ask you for that and then, you know, just hit the button. And... So as you can see, um, I try I passed on this information, ChatGPT, and ChatGPT was able to summarize it in shorter format. Again, it's not a very sophisticated response. We still need to work on that, but at least uh, it will give it gives an idea about how you can build um, a web app that can harness the power of GPT 3.5 model and perform the similar sort of like NLP, natural language processing task that you can do uh, by going to the ChatGPT website. But the caveat is sometimes, you know, the ChatGPT website could be down because of a uh, lot of use, users are, you know, using it at the same time. Or sometimes you can get into a, onto a web, wait list as this tool is very popular. So why do we wait for chat GPT to give me access to their website. Rather, I'll just build my web app, call their API keys, and using that API keys, I'll just get access to the main model. Because um, all we need a web interface that can, you know, just gain access to the model. And um, once we get that, then we can do anything and we can get the same response as we will be able to get it on the chat GPT website. So I hope this uh, you know, like short demo would be helpful for you. I hope this demo gives an idea 
but how you can build your own web app and harness the power of Jupyter 3.5 model. If you like this video, I'll definitely recommend you to subscribe to my channel. The subscribe button is over there, so you don't have to go anywhere else. Um, just hit on there and it will take you to my YouTube page. So I think that's all for now. Uh, in my next vlog, I'll talk more about some of the converse, conversational AI or the generative AI that's kind of like becoming very popular in recent days. But this vlog marks the end of my chat GPT series for now, but I'm pretty sure there'll be more vlogs I need to make in future as this GPT model gain more attraction among the AI communities. So that's all for now. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel as more tutorial blogs like this are forthcoming. Thank you.